Hello Thinkstars and welcome to a new Pandas tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn about the Pandas function QCut. And this function creates unequal sized bins with the same number of samples in each bin. So first of all we will create the Pandas data frame that we will be using throughout the rest of the tutorial. Uh, here we first import the Pandas library, then we create a Pandas data frame and assign it to the variable df. And yeah, the outputted data frame provides some information about several competitors uh, and a score that each competitor has reached. And now we apply the pandas qcut function. So inside the function, we put in a df score as the value for the parameter x to state that um, this is the column that we want to use to calculate the bins on. And the second argument is 3, which we assign to the q parameter. And this is the number, number of quantiles. And the output assigns each score to an interval. And yeah, there are things, a few things to explain here. First of all, the intervals uh, start with parentheses and end with square bra brackets. That means that the left value of each interval is not included, but the right value is. So for example, we have a look at the first interval, 0 0.999 is not included in this interval, but 4.0 is included. And we can also see that the, diff uh, the size of the intervals it's not the same for each interval. The first interval, for example, has a size of three, and the second has a, or the other, yeah, the second um, interval has a size of 5.667. So um, how do these particular sizes um, get calculate, calculated? To answer that, we have to look at the number of values in each interval which we can determine by applying the value counts function. As the name suggests, this function counts the values, in this case of each interval. And we can see that every different interval is assigned three score values. And um, yeah, so each interval contains just as many values as the others. And this is how the sizes of the intervals gets calculated so that every interval gets assigned the same number of values. Uh, and to make it better visible which interval belongs to which score, we can create a new column for the data frame. So we assign the QCAT function to a new column called category. And if we output that, we see um, yeah, which interval belongs to which score. And here we can also see that each interval um, is now here three times exactly. So this is how the size of the intervals is calculated. calculated. And now we will have a deeper look at the Q parameter. In this example, we assigned the value three to create three bins, or three intervals, sorry. And we can also assign this parameter a list. And this is how it would look like. So this way we directly determine how many percent of the values uh, are included in each interval. For example, if we do it like this, um, the first uh, interval contains the first 25% of the values because it ranges from 0 to 0.25. And um, yeah, if we do that, we should get again, an equal amount of values in each interval. 
And again, we can check that by applying the value counts function to count the values in each interval. And we can observe that um, the first interval has one, contains one, one more value than the other ones. And that's because um, we have nine scores in total and nine cannot be divided by four because we have four intervals. So consequently, the number of values per interval cannot be exactly the same. In this case, because it's uh, nine, can, nine cannot be divided by four. So um, yeah, but we get almost the same size in each interval. And the distance between the quantiles uh, in the array does not have to be even. We can also do something like this. So uh, in this case, the first interval is way bigger than the other ones because the number of values, um, yes, yeah, so this way the number of values per interval is not evenly distributed. The first interval ranges from 0 to 0.5 and the second one, for example, from 0.5 to 0.7, this is way, way smaller distance than the first one. And we can, again, check the number of values. And we can see that the first interval now has uh, a way higher number of values in it because we made it the biggest one. And yeah, uh, we can also determine the interval, interval pre precision. Um, we can see in the initial one um, we had three decimal places for the interval like 0 0.999 uh, but we can change that by um, using the precision parameter and this parameter expects an integer value which determines how many decimal places we want to get and we can use the initial qcap function with um, the q parameter assigned the value of 3 to get 3 bins or 3 intervals. Now we apply the preci precision parameter and assign it the value of 5. And this way, as we can see, we get um, yeah, five, um, 5 digits behind the comma and this is a bit more precise way of creating the intervals, but uh, how precise it should be just depends on the use case. And yeah, we can also um, print out the bins directly by applying the red bins parameter, which stands for return bins. And uh, again, we use, we apply three to the Q parameter and we set the red bins parameter to true. And the only difference to the initial function without the red bins parameter is that we get uh, this new line at the bottom of the output. And here we get the resulting bins inside an array. So um, this is especially useful when we, um, yeah, use uh, an integer value for the Q parameter. And yeah, it's just a bit more, an additional output that we might find interesting and that provides us with additional information. We can also define um, labels for our, for our uh, categories. Uh, this way we get a great overview uh, over our data and yeah, we do that by um, applying the labels parameter. And therefore, I will use the initial QCAD function with three intervals to create. And we also assign the labels parameter. And now we give uh, each category a, a label. 
So basically we are categorizing the scores. So the smallest interval is called bad, the second one is called good, and the third one is called exceptional. And we can directly assign this to the um, to the category um, column that we created. And this way we do not get the intervals for each score, but um, yeah, directly the labels to uh, categorize our data with um, yeah, with words with which is maybe a bit more user friendly if someone reads this and this way we can just categorize it a little bit smoother and in a better and a bit more understandable way. And finally we will have a look at the comparison uh, with the cut function. So um, when you've come across the QCut function, you might have also came across the cut function that Pandas provides us with. And there's a slight difference between these two functions. So if we apply the QCut function again, well, this way by assigning three to the Q parameter, we create three quantiles in a way that each interval now contains the same amount of score values which we confirmed by applying the value counts um, function. And we saw that each interval contained the same amount of um, values. And now we do essentially the same with the cut function. Again, the x parameter, we assign the score column. And the cut function doesn't have a Q parameter, but instead a bins parameter, um, which we also assign the value 3. And if we print it out, um, the intervals here are different from the ones that we created with the QCut function. And compared to the QCut function, these intervals all have the same size, so they are all equally big. Basically, um, they're all about six units long, but in this case, the number of um, the number of values in each interval is different. And if we here also apply the value counts function, we can see that each interval does not have the same amount of values in it. So the QCut function creates intervals uh, that are not equally long, but they all contain the same number of values, whereas the cut function creates uh, equal sized intervals that do not necessarily have the same number of values in them. And yeah, that was the tutorial. In this tutorial, we learned about the QCut function. We saw how to create intervals in several ways, how to determine the intervals precision, and how to label our categories. And we also determined the differences to the cut function. And this was the tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something and I see you in the next one.